Well, asphalt, new construction, and concrete are all materials found in urban areas that can cause cities to become warmer than surrounding rural areas and create what's called an urban heat island. All right, it's why San Antonio is now testing out material that could combat those hot summer temps on our city streets. I spoke to the city about its cooling pavement trial and how the cool topper has already shown to combat the urban heat island effect. Lack of tree canopy or greenery, concrete walls, and lots of asphalt can result in much warmer temperatures in urban areas because those materials retain heat and have less greenery to help cool the area down. It's called the urban heat island effect. It leads to significantly warmer temperatures in the city during the summer months, and it's a problem the city of San Antonio is aware of and attempting to find ways to combat. But what's important about the urban heat islands is that the heat is absorbed all throughout the day, it's supposed to cool down at night, and it doesn't because all that heat is then released back into the neighborhoods. According to a UTSA study on urban heat islands, the city's east and west side can be anywhere from 10 to even 20 degrees warmer during the summer compared to nearby rural areas. It's why San Antonio is leading the charge in Texas, being the first city in the state to test out cooler pavement. It's basically a pavement topper that is shown to combat the urban heat island effect and not retain as much heat as asphalt or concrete. In most situations, a seal coat would go on top to maintain the street. In this situation, it's a seal coat. It has a couple of different materials that make it more reflective, a little bit lighter. That way, the sunlight isn't absorbed into the pavement. Murray Myers, a city sustainability manager, says the cooler pavement was given to the city as a sample. The University of Texas San Antonio and the city will conduct a study on the small applied area near the Hay Street Bridge over the next several months. If proven successful, the city will invest in the material to start applying it to the most impacted neighborhoods. The good news, studies in other cities have shown it does work. Los Angeles and Phoenix are already using the cool pavement. Arizona State University did a study in Phoenix in 2020 that showed cool pavement had an average surface temperature 10.5 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit lower than traditional asphalt at noon and during afternoon hours. Subsurface temperatures averaged 4.8 degrees Fahrenheit lower in areas treated with the cool pavement. And nighttime air temperature at six feet of height was on average 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit lower over cool pavement than on non-treated surfaces. If we locate or strategize our resources into the hot spots, then we can lower those temperatures and then tackle the, the next neighborhood. Meyer says this is just one tool in the toolbox when it comes to combating warming temperatures in the city. Planting more trees also plays a big role. So that UTSA study mm -hmm. is it's just kind of in the first levels of the study. They haven't completed the whole study on they're studying the different neighborhoods in San Antonio that have more of an urban heat island effect. And they said the city's east and west sides because they have less tree canopy um, and more concrete and asphalt that absorbs that heat during those summer months. Um, so hopefully within the next year, UTSA will release that full study on what areas are most impacted in our city. And it was Mike asked that question, you know, and, and it was there's different parts of like the older parts of the city, like. <laughs> Almost Park has more tree coverage, so it's actually cooler during the summer months than some of those areas that retain heat on the asphalt and concrete. Yeah. It's